welcome everyone uh, who joined the session. I know you've been uh, moving between the different sessions and uh, there are still people in some of the other sessions and people coming into this session. And that's the beauty of uh, having uh, this hop-in platform. While we had some technical issues in the beginning, I think we should run smoothly now and people have the flexibility to uh, go from one place to another. Welcome to the Prime Champions for SDG session. Uh, the session's focus today is specifically on the Prime Champions program uh, and uh, the output of the Prime Champions cycle from the previous two years in 2018 and 19. We have as panelists um, uh, Alec Wurzen from Glasgow Caledonian University in Scotland and we have Evgenia Pashevich from uh, the uh, IBS uh, RANEPA in Moscow. Um, I will let them introduce themselves uh, more specifically. But I would like to start by uh, bringing a brief, inter a brief overview of what the Champions program is about. Uh, it's a program that runs on a two-year uh, cycle basis. Uh, and it's a program that is very uh, geographically encompassing and has various types of uh, some of the most engaged uh, prime signatories uh, from, within the, from within the initiative. Um, the, uh, the idea with the Champions program is that uh we have uh between we have about 38 schools right now in the in the in the program that come together to work on collaborative uh, projects that will be of value and of interest to the wider prime community um i would like to um, uh, pay specific attention to the prime champions mission which is uh, to contribute to thought and action leadership on responsible management education in the context of the UN Sustainable Development Agenda. So in working collaboratively and, and looking at the broader um, issues and the broader goals that are presented by the United Nations, the Champions Group really comes together from uh, different corners of the world. We, we have 20 countries represented in the current program cycle. Uh, and we, uh, uh, it's a place for, for collaboration for various uh, uh, projects, subgroup projects, but also for overall projects. And that's where uh, a, a big part of this session will focus on the output of the previous cycle, uh, specifically uh, something that we call the blueprint for SDG integration in curriculum research and partnership. Uh, it's a resource that is uh, readily available. We're publishing it today and uh, we'll spend some more time on it uh, during this session and I will post a link in the session uh, chat here to to the resource as we go along but before we get there we would start with uh, with Evgenia uh, who would like to share a few uh, of her reflections as a as a member of the Prime Champions program uh, and how her school has been uh, working with the program and how her school has been um, engaging with colleagues and what they're getting out of it so Evgenia you have the, the stage uh, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to uh, share um, my slides and I, I don't don't really see that. Can you do that for me, Nikolai? Uh, yes, I can, I can load your slides. Yeah, uh, good. Just give me a moment. But anyway, I'll start meanwhile. So uh, uh, I'll start with a short introduction of myself. So uh, as Nikolai said, uh, my name is Yevgeny Pachkevich, and I am from IBS Ranepa, which means, and that's going to be a long name, but the Institute of Business Studies of the Russian Presidential Academy of National Economy and Public Administration. But we mostly refer to ourselves as IBS Moscow. IBS is, uh, I would say, leading business school of Russia. We are ACSB and uh, AMBA accredited. Uh, and we were also the first Russian school to um, join our Prime Initiative in 2008. Uh, so um, during our first four years as Prime Signatories, uh, we uh, mostly, just like everybody else, you know, we were slowly implementing our principles for responsible management education, uh, and we were submitting our SIP reports, uh, but really nothing much uh, was going on at that time uh, but about six years ago this all changed when we uh, revised our mission uh, and uh, sustainability and social responsibility became uh, a focus for us it became part of our mission and uh, all of our development strategy uh, and of course we were starting to look uh, at different ways you know of different activities 
uh, and the strong engagement with Prime uh, was actually one of those ways. Uh, so um, we changed uh, in 2016, we changed the uh, Central uh, and uh, European um, in Prime chapter. Uh, and uh, in 2017, we applied for Prime Champion Cycle uh, for the first time and we were accepted. And at that time, we didn't really know much about what was uh, that about. But it turned out to be so uh, incredibly uh, fruitful and productive for us that uh, we immediately applied for the next uh, cycle as well and also were accepted and we are very proud about it. Uh, so, um, yes, yeah, so this, uh, this next slide, I really wanted to say a few words about uh, uh, Prime Champions, what's so great about Prime Champions. Um, so, uh, you see, uh, you know, the three things, of course, there are many more, but the three things that I wanted to point out is that it's a very global group as different from, for example, uh, original chapters, which are by definition regional, okay? Uh, in uh, Prime Champions Group, we uh, have schools from all the continents uh, and from all over the world. Um, uh, it's a very diverse group, besides the geographical diversity that I have just mentioned, it is diverse in, all, in, a, in a variety of aspects. There are big schools and there are small schools. Uh, there are new schools and old uh, institutions. There are schools who have a lot of uh, resources and support from their universities for, for the prime activities and who may have a uh, dedicated group of maybe 10 people working on, you know, on, on prime activities. And there are schools who only have maybe one person working in that part time. Uh, so uh, this really brings a lot of synergies when you can see, you know, how things are done in school that are so different. Uh, and the third thing, uh, committed and inspiring, and I should also add inspired. Uh, and that's probably the most important thing because I, I truly have never seen so many people, you know, that are so dedicated to what they are doing, you know, and so enthusiastic about what they are doing. Uh, and especially in my country, in Russia, uh, sustainability and uh, uh, responsibility agenda is not that central yet, hopefully, to business schools and businesses alike. Uh, so for us, it was uh, extremely important to see all those great practices that, you know, that other schools have uh, and uh, try to adapt them to uh, our reality. Uh, and I, I would like to thank all Prime Champions schools for that. And really what I also wanted to say that I think that Prime Champions group is really a big driving force uh, of Prime, you know, because uh, well, working groups and chapters are very important, but they're specific either in terms of regions or in terms of the topics that they work on. Of course, there is the board, but in those recent years, you know, there wasn't that much leadership coming from the board, and hopefully that will change now with the new board. But really, what I see Prime Champions is the main driving force of Prime in general. Um, so what, what has been accomplished? Um, uh, Alec will talk about the main deliverable for the last uh, uh, cycle, uh, which is the blueprint for SDG integration. That's a tremendously important uh, document. Uh, the cycle before that uh, produced the transformational model for uh, prime uh, implementation. Extremely important for all schools who just joined prime and don't know how to start and you know how to implement the principles. Uh, so uh, those two documents, which also will be complemented by repositories, uh, with the access to different kinds of materials from different schools uh, are extremely important. Uh, but a part of the, uh, from that, uh, another important thing uh, is uh, the projects. And Mikhail, if we could go to the next um, to the next slide. Uh, so uh, uh, the projects that are performed jointly uh, by different schools, and uh, in each cycle there are about ten dozen projects <coughs> running. Uh, on this slide, I only uh, uh, decided to present only three of them, again, and there are many more, but those three that, that we uh, were part of or that we are uh, going to use. Uh, so the first one is a carbon literacy training. Actually, there was a session on that just before this one, uh, and I wanted to thank uh, 
Petra and Rachel for, for this uh, great um, uh, project. I actually uh, uh, took that training in Young Chopping in Sweden. Uh, and now we are thinking of uh, making that a compulsory component of our curriculum uh, for undergraduate students. I think this is uh, this will have a tremendous impact on, on what we are doing in our school. Uh, the MOOC on uh, SDGs, which was uh, developed, led by Hunking uh, Business School and in collaboration with other schools as well. Uh, it's important to say that the results of those projects do not stay within the group. They are available for everyone. So we, for example, are using a certain module from this MOOC. And starting from this cycle, we are going also to participate in developing materials. Uh, and uh, the last example that I wanted to give is this uh, business and social impact in emerging markets, uh, which is implemented by four schools. Uh, we are going to do this for the first time, we as IBS, uh, this autumn. Uh, and even despite the COVID, the students will not be able to physically come, uh, but we'll be doing that online. Uh, and I do believe that uh, this will be a tremendous learning opportunity for the students and also for the schools. So uh, basically, uh, this is what I was going to say. I think that's been 10 minutes. Uh, so I'll be uh, happy to uh, uh, answer any questions you might have. Uh, just uh, the, the last thing I want to say, again, to thank everyone that we have been working uh, with during this uh, Prime Champions uh, cycle. Thank you. Much, Evgenia. Thank you. And I, I just wanted to mention to uh, the participants and the viewers uh, that when, once the slides are shared, you can double click on the window to expand them. And so the panelists would move on the site and then you would have the presentation in front of you in a bigger screen. Uh, but thank you so much for, for this uh, comments, Evgenia. Uh, and um, Alec, please welcome to the stage. Oh, uh, cool. Would you like to unshare as well, please, Nikolai? Yes. And I will share with everybody now the, the, the resource that Alec will be speaking about. Okay, well, good morning, Europe. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, Europe, sorry. Good morning, the Americas. Good evening, Asia. And uh, happy bedtime, those of you in Australasia. Uh, my name is Alec Worson. I'm Associate Professor in Strategy and Corporate Responsibility at Glasgow Caledonian University, a university for the common good in Scotland. Um, I'm also chair of the UK and Ireland Prime Regional Chapter, and the UK and Ireland has about 82 prime signatories in it. Now, I'm, uh, I'm delighted uh, today to be sharing the, uh, to, to be presenting the output of the last champion cycle, as Nikolai mentioned. Um, it's the output contribu contributions from 37 committed institutions, and the document itself was written by a leadership team of seven. Um, let me just say that the SDG blueprint document that I'm going to talk about today is part of a, a bigger SDG blueprint project, because there are two parts to it. Uh, the first part is what I'm going to present today, and that is effectively a step-by-step -step guide uh, that colleagues can use to either start or accelerate the process of integrating the SDGs into curriculum, research, and partnerships. The second part, which is still under development, will be an online repository of examples which are intended to foster knowledge exchange and peer le learning and inspire colleagues around the world um, in different ways of how to do this. Um, we plan to have a dedicated SDG Blueprint website which will provide access to both parts of the blueprint. But in the meantime, Nikolai shared the link and it will be available on the new Prime website shortly. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the wonderful Blueprint leadership team with whom I had the pleasure of working over several months um, to get this blueprint ready for this global forum. Uh, you can see. Yes, let me just uh, mention that you're you're we're not sharing, we're not seeing your presentation. So if you you're not sharing the screen currently. You, you, oh, just let me go back. Can you see it now? Yes, we see it now. 
Right, sorry, thank you, Nikolai, my apologies. Okay, so here are the um, beautiful seven, seven people I was working with, uh, Jill, Joanna, Mark, Farah, Christian, Harsh, and of course, Nikolai, a very international team from different corners of the world. Now, in the last few months, we've adopted, like most of you, to the new normal. Uh, we're quite accustomed to using uh, Zoom technology for our international collaboration anyway, so it wasn't too uh, challenging. So, what am I going to share with you today? Well, in the time available, uh, my aim is to give you a, a flavour of this SDG blueprint. And I want you to go away from the session uh, sufficiently fired up that you'll go away, download it, read it, share it, be inspired by it, and hopefully use it. I'd like to stress that it's not designed to be a research document. It's a practical guide to help universities and business schools to integrate the SDGs into all academic activities. Now, before I go into sharing some insights with you, I'd like to start by giving you some context for the blueprint. I'll then give you some compelling reasons why we should be doing more on this topic. And then I'll go on and try and answer the simple question of how you can increase engagement with the SDGs in your institution before sharing some of the work from the blueprint itself. Now, in a few images, um, I think this summarizes the context in which this SDG blueprint um, is being launched and the sustainable development goals talk to lots of the images that you see on this screen. Health inequalities, racial inequalities, economic inequalities, in some a host of societal inequalities and social injustice. It also points to the need for systemic changes as expressed in these 17 sustainable development goals which we need to have front and centre stage in our business schools. A second part, important part of the timing of the launch of this blueprint is that, as you know, we've just entered the United Nations Decade of Action. We heard at the Global Compact Leaders Summit earlier this week that while progress has been made, there's not enough action being carried out. And I think that the same applies to business schools and universities. We talk about the SDGs, there's some great work going on, no doubt about that, but we need to up our ante. And we hope that this blueprint will certainly uh, contribute to that goal. Now, apart from the moral imperative of universities and business schools to contribute to these goals, there are also some very simple instrumental reasons why it's in our self-interest to do so. I mean, we've got growing demand from employers for sustainability and SDG literate graduates. There's uh, our students themselves are demanding more and more sustainability and SDG related education and research in our institutions. Uh, we know that accreditation bodies like AMBER and AACSB and EFMD uh, want us to put ethics, responsibility and sustainability mainstream in core delivery. Um, and if we look at business school rankings, there's a big push towards measuring social impact of our institutions. We've got the Times Higher Education social impact rankings. We've got the positive rating, impact rank rating that was a topic of an earlier session today. And we've got the Financial Times getting on board. And that's great to see. Um, and let's not forget that because these are global problems and we need solutions for them, funding bodies, research funding bodies, are putting bigger, bigger pots of money there for business schools and universities to tap into. Now, as stated, um, <clears throat> the question here, sorry, is how can business schools contribute to SDGs? Well, I think the the answer here is self-explanatory and one that you're aware of. We can do it through the core business of education. So if we, we could take SDG target 4.7, which talks about ensuring that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development. But of course, in addition to education, 
we are research um, institutions, we are creators and disseminators of knowledge, and we do a lot of partnership working as well. Now, what am I going actually to share with you today? Well, I am going to share a few snippets from the blueprint. Uh, the main purpose of this blueprint, as I've said, is to provide a step-by-step -step guide about how we go about the task in a meaningful way to create real impact. We encourage you, anyone reading this document, we encourage you to approach SDG integration as a strategic project. It's not a job for one person, but for a team. It's not an event, but it's a journey of discovery and innovation. Now, meaningful integration needs lots of commitment. It needs top-down and bottom-up commitment and engagement. It needs ownership. It needs roles and responsibilities to be allocated to get this job done. It needs resources for education of faculty and staff, but also to drive innovation in curriculum and research. And it needs good project management. If you look at this slide, what we're suggesting is that we need top-down, uh, bottom-up, and in the middle, we need departmental heads, uh, research leaders, module leaders, all to be chipping into this agenda. To help those charged with leading the strategic project of SDG integration, we've designed this prime SDG compass. As the word compass suggests, it offers a systematic approach to the task of integration of the SDGs in these activities, and in the blueprint, what you will find are different sections and different models and tips on how to approach each of these four steps. But I'm going to share a few of these with you to give you an insight. The starting point in the SDG Compass is mapping. We've got to understand where we are. Uh, where, is, where are the SDGs currently featuring in curriculum, in research, in partnerships? But critically, what we've got to do first is we've got to determine what the scope of this mapping activity is going to be. Is it going to be for the whole business school? That might be possible if you've got a lot of resources, a lot of ambition and a lot of commitment. Um, but maybe we want to start more small scale. So we might start at a departmental level and we can do a mapping exercise in the curriculum. We can do a mapping exercise in research. We could do a mapping exercise in partnerships. And the degree to which you will cover all nine segments on this box will be very much determined by the resource commitment that you can put behind it to do it in a meaningful way. There are clearly different approaches to doing mapping. And in here, we suggest that there are three uh, main approaches uh, to doing it, doing it. There is no right way. I think I need to um, stress that point. But I can confidently say that the value to an institution of mapping against targets on the right side, rather than simply against the SDG icon and simple association, uh, the results of doing that will be far more tangible because if done in this way, we can measure our impact and contribution very specifically to specific SDG targets. So while most institutions seem to be mapping against the icon, just associating their work loosely with the SDGs, we are recommending that you take the plunge and invest in mapping against specific SDG targets. Now, once mapping is complete, we've got to find some way of meaningfully analyzing what we've found. And again, institutions can do this in a whole host of ways. So it, there is no one right way, but one tool that you may wish to explore is the How School of Business SDG dashboard. Now, a number of prime champions have piloted use of this tool and they're finding it very useful way of visualizing the results of mapping. As you can see here, if you have a visualization like this, um, the dashboard can give an indication 
of where activity is taking place in teaching, in research, in partnerships, and which SDGs seem to be the areas in which you have particular strength. But of course, a word of warning again, the quality of this dashboard is only as good as the data that goes into it. So again, resources need to be put in to give people time to collect the data, to put into the data, uh, into the dashboard, so that you can actually do the mapping in the SDG compass and move on to the next stage. Now, once we've done the mapping exercise, we can turn to our attention to answer the so what question. What now? We'll be asking ourselves, can the SDGs add value to our institution? Can it enhance our portfolio and provision? Naturally, integrating the SDGs into our institutions is not an end in itself. It will only be meaningful if it supports the institutional mission, enhances activities. So on this slide, we can see that we can go about this in different ways. Each institution will progress in a way that makes sense to them, looking at a narrow number of SDGs or a broad number of SDGs, and whether it's going to be integrating into existing streams of activity or whether it requires the um, development of new stages. Now, while this matrix here uh, lays out a number of strategic options on a strategic level across the business school, across all academic activities, in the blueprint, we have three different sections related to curriculum research and partnership developed by colleagues at Deakin and Grison in court. Um, and I'm going to give you a brief insight into what um, some of the things you'll see in the blueprint. Now, in terms of the curriculum, uh, this table outlines a number of key considerations uh, that can be taken account when developing a medium to long term plan for SDG integration. I'm not going to go into all of them, but for example, program teams may need to decide whether there are going to be SDG specific courses, and that's going to be what, how it's going to be introduced, or whether the SDGs will be included in all courses in some small form. Are SDG materials going to be core? Is the topic going to be core, or is it going to be more focused on electives and optional modules? Is it going to be integrated into existing courses, or is the plan going to be to introduce new SEG courses? The blueprint also presents a way of looking at how to develop more and impactful SDG related research. Given that the demand for knowledge and potential solutions for, for societal problems is all the greater. An institution might have strengths that relate to individual academics, for example, or institutions might decide to um, pool expertise and develop a research centre or a research group. So again, this is a question of options, and when you download and read the blueprint, we hope that the different options will give you different ways and new insights into how to take this, um, take this forward. Um, by the way, I should add that none of these options uh, are mutually exclusive. You may actually run them in parallel. And finally, when we come to um, partnerships, last but not least, <clears throat> this is a model developed again by colleagues on the um, blueprint team. The blueprint presents a model which can be used to situate current partnership activities and consider how these partnerships, uh, how the institution might reach the centre, what's called the partnership sweet spot. This model suggests that higher education institution partnerships are primarily led by management or faculty but they're also shaped by either the institutional agenda or in response to societal goals. The point here, though, is that impactful and sustainable partnerships for the Sustainable Development Goals, rather than being isolated activities, 
different kinds of multiple logics in which institutions are working towards a more central position in this partnership sweet spot. This partnership sweet spot is where all of these four drivers come together so that academics are aligning uh, partnerships with teaching and research interests, but critically, they are supported, enabled, and equipped by management with the resources to do so. So, what can I say? Um, that's it. Uh, in brief, it's a brief insight into the SDG blueprint. We all hope you'll download it, read it, share it, use it, and have a good journey and get the job done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alec. Thank you for this presentation of the, the Blueprint for SDG Integration. As you mentioned, we are also planning to, uh, it's, it's in the making actually, uh, uh, an online version of the Blueprint in the form of a, of a standalone website for the Blueprint, which would have as a one part of the of the website would be the content of the Blueprint document that you all have access to right now. And the other part of it will be the repositories uh, for curriculum research and partnerships. And so uh, in the coming weeks, as we launch the, the Blueprint website, uh, we will create a, a, a little bit of a hype around it, uh, but we will invite the whole community to join on the website and to engage with the content of the Blueprint that was just presented, um, and as, as well as to start um, uh, looking into the repositories and, and contribute with examples on how uh, the schools are actually uh, approaching the integration of the SDGs into the curriculum research and, and partnership practices. Um, if I may ask uh, um, Alec, uh, from uh, now that now that now that you see the the report uh, launched and live and accessible for everybody, how would you advise uh, schools who are seeing this for the first time? Uh, that are interested in, in uh, working on the SDGs, integrating the SDGs into the different key areas, how would you advise that they approach this document and, and use it? And how would they? How would you advise that, that let's say, the people that are here on the call now uh, look up to, to this uh, document and how would they share it with, with their peers, with their colleagues at their institutions? And, and how do they go about it? Because the audience for the Blueprint document uh, is... Um, is very wide, uh, uh, and that's the reason why also the document is is uh, as simple as possible to understand and to follow as a step by step guide. So, what would you what would your advice that would be? Well, I, I think um, as as leads for Prime, and I think a lot of people on the call are leads for Prime in their institutions. I, I think the key job is to um, first of all communicate that this document exists. Um, and going back into institutions and perhaps uh, presenting some of the findings from the document, um, sharing it, reading it, having discussion about it, uh, and stressing the step-by-step -step nature of it. Uh, I, th I think a key point of our joint work on this is that this is not a job for one person. You know, I think if there's anything, this is absolutely clear from what we learned in the champions group. You need a team, you need top-down um, support, you need bottom-up engagement, you need resources, um, but, but critically you need a, a systematic approach because I think we're all still in experimenting stage after four years of the SDGs, but now in the decade of action, I think we need to move to a more systematic uh, approach. And I apply that to my own institution, where we are um, motoring, if you like, quite motoring, getting a lot of top-down support, 